Yay, we are live. Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. I am here with Haley Hodson and Sonia Westberg. Um, we went to University of North Texas together for our undergrad and kind of overlapped in our master's as well. So I'm really excited they are here with me to talk about their upcoming project, New Strings Attached. So I'm going to let them, if you guys want to quickly introduce yourselves, we can dive into some of the questions we prepared. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, I'm Haley Hodson. Um, I went to UNT for my bachelor's. I went to UT Austin for my master's and then came back around. Um, I've been teaching HARP for Frisco ISD. This will be my fourth year now. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing other than freelance gigs. So, living the HARPist dream. Yep, all the fun stuff. <laughs> Well, and I'm Sonia Westberg, also UNT grad. I did both my bachelor's and master's there. And um, I'm now relocated in San Antonio, Texas, my old stomping grounds where I grew up. And uh, I'm I'm teaching pretty much full time. I run my own private studio. And, you know, like Haley said, doing the freelance stuff, living the harp dream. <laughs> and uh, yeah, doing, looking forward to this upcoming year, you know, with things getting back to a little bit more of a normal uh, <laughs> normal spin. So looking forward to some, some exciting projects. So yeah. In-person stuff sometimes in person. will be nice. Although yeah. it's really cool how, you know, COVID and stuff, it was a you know, difficult year for sure, but it definitely inspired some people to think outside the box. And I was really excited when I saw your upcoming project on new strings attached. Cause I, you know, I love working with new music. I love working with composers. I love encouraging composers to write for harp just because, you know, we like fun music um, so I'd love to hear um, more about what inspired this project. What, how, what gave you this idea? Sure. Um, I'll go ahead and start. So for me, happened during the quarantine. Um, I got really into recording my own arrangements, sharing them on YouTube. It just became this fun little project of mine. Um, I started just using this silly little app called Acapella. Uh, while that was fun, it was pretty bad audio quality. Um, so I just started to crave like better audio quality. Um, so I went ahead and bought a pickup for my pedal harp. Um, and so that made a huge improvement on my recordings. Um, but yeah, I just realized that I really liked recording, although the process is very taxing. I enjoy it somehow. Um, so then I had the thought of recording a CD, um, something I've never done before, but I thought would be like a really cool new goal project for me to work on. Um, so yeah, I mean, I had to think, okay, well, what do I want this CD to be? Initially was asking, okay, do I want to do my own arrangements? Mm, no, not really. I don't want to deal with like copyright issues. Um, do I want to do a solo harp CD? Mm, also, no, not really. Uh, <laughs> I thought it would just be way more fun um, to have a partner in this kind of project. So I asked Sonia to join me, of course, and thankfully she was on board right away. Um, but yeah, the, the most recent project we worked on together um, was the U.S. premiere of Paul Patterson's Cantonese Images. Um, and this was just a really cool experience for us. Um, we got to work with the composer in rehearsals. Um, yeah, this was a relatively new piece. Um, so this is kind of what gave us the idea to um, commission new works for Harp Duo. Um, and I do actually have a link. I have a couple links I can share with you guys. Yeah, I just added that one actually. Uh, oh, okay, you already added it, cool. Yeah, so if you're interested in listening to Cantonese images, that's linked in the comments. Um, yeah. That's and I cool. think, yeah, that was one of the first projects, I, and I'm going to call it a project because it was a project, <laughs> um, where, you know, where we were actually working together as a duo. We worked with Paul Patterson, the composer. Um, the music was already written, so it wasn't anything, um, you know, we weren't giving feedback like, Oh, I can't do this. Uh, you know, it was it was. You know, just there were more, things that seemed. Well, there, <laughs> there were, but I think it was that was sort of how Haley and I also discovered that we liked working together. And you know, we were already friends before that, but we enjoyed playing together and working on these projects. And I think also what inspired this project was that you know we're both 
relatively new graduates. I mean, we're, we're young professionals, all three of us. And so, you know, once you leave the university setting, you're sort of on your own and you, you don't really have access to, you know, projects or to composers or to recital opportunities. Um, so this was a chance for us to sort of start something out of college that, you know, we sort of did in college too. So it, it was, you know, we wanted to stay busy. We wanted to keep performing and we wanted to play as a duo together. So. That's awesome. And I remember, you know, we were in the UNT heartbeats together and you guys really worked well together as an ensemble. So I definitely kind of saw the beginnings of that. Yeah. We weren't allowed to sit by each other. Yeah. We got in trouble. Um, yeah. Well, but having that friendship is such an important foundation of an ensemble that works together. You know, just, you can read each other's thoughts, you can breathe together and yeah. have fun together too. Cause I mean, performing is supposed to be fun right. as well. And that's, that's important. Absolutely. Yeah. Versus we, we performing that. with total strangers. I've, yeah. I've done that. it's cool to have that connection, but at the same time, it has its own challenges. Right. For sure. For sure. So you guys are working with three composers for this project. Um, kind of based everywhere. So what made you decide, um, pick these three specific composers or, and tell us a little bit about them. I'd love to learn yeah. more. Sure. I'll start off. Um, so I met two of our composers, uh, during my master's at UT Austin, um, Minho Yoon. Um, I met while I, I played with the new music ensemble for a couple semesters and it was just a really awesome group to play with. Like some of the top players, <laughs> at UT. We played a lot of challenging music, but it was really rewarding. Um, but yeah, his piece just stood out to me out of all the pieces I played with. I remember playing uh, his day trip for 14 players. Um, so yeah, he immediately came to mind for this project. Um, and I did forget to mention he is uh, from Korea, but currently uh, working as a musician in Thailand. And yeah, we do have that piece if you want to give it a listen. I'm actually on that recording. Very cool piece, Day Trip for 14 Players. Um, and then Grace Ma, I met her during my master's as well, not through the new music ensemble, um, but she actually approached me, asked if I wanted to perform one of her pieces for her composition recital. Um, so this was a really cool experience. I actually got to work with her like on her composition a little bit. Uh, just talk about like the mechanics of the harp, just worked, reworked a few little things. Um, but yeah, we had a great time rehearsing. Um, forgot to mention it was a trio <laughs> for harp, flute, and viola. Um, and yeah, I just totally fell in love with this piece. Um, so immediately thought of Grace as well and knew I had to work with her again. Yeah, and Danielle yeah. offered and a link to that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, and as far as our third composer, who's Kyle Gordon, um, he was, I think, a mutual friend of both Haley and I at UNT. Uh, and you, I know you know him too, yeah. <laughs> uh, Danielle. So um, I, I honestly, I can't remember exactly how I met met Kyle, but you know, small UNT world, you, we, we happened to be in the same hallway a lot. Um, I think the harp hallway, like shared, we the were in the jazz hallway, hallway the jazz yeah. hallway. So we, you know, we were always running into each other. And I know that I, I, um, you know, we were friends and I, I remember looking through some of his compositions, just, you know, very casually, like, Hey, will you, will you read through this? Does this work? What do you think? Um, I know I played on a few of his recitals as well. Um, one project that kind of stuck out to me was uh, his his project called Old Sights and New Sounds, which he actually worked on with another composer as well. But it was essentially a um, like a silent film. It was a, a Charlie Chaplin film, and they scored the music for that. And so we were playing with. Um, with film, <laughs> uh, I don't know how to say that better, but it's funny, I actually, I went to all the rehearsals and for some reason I couldn't do the actual performance of it, but that was a really cool experience even though I didn't really get to perform it live, but um, he's a great composer and a good pal of ours. So he was the third person and actually I think the first person that we thought to approach um, since we both know him and- Both thinking know, in the back of our heads, like, yeah. oh. Yeah. <laughs> 
Kyle Gordon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And he's, I think he's based in California now. So he's okay. out in, in Los Angeles, but um, you know, yeah. it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. we, can, we can all meet still and, you know. Well, it's incredible world. with, you know, nowadays it's all just so much easier. People are just used to meeting virtually and it's, right. it's so cool. It's opened up those opportunities. And yeah. I love how this really is kind of like a global project. You have composers just based everywhere. It's not just, you know, right. regional. That's exactly what I was going to say. That was another reason for like, if we were to say, why do we choose these three specific mm -hmm. composers? I mean, we have someone from Korea and Canada and California. And we, we really wanted to choose young composers as well. Mm -hmm. Help support them. Well, uh, it's so important for composers <laughs> when they're young, just to be able to work with real life musicians and not just rely on, you know, sample libraries or, notation software writing music that they hope will someday get performed maybe, but yeah. they actually writing music for performers that will be performed. It's just, it's so important for them. And not many performers enjoy doing it, which is a tragedy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've enjoyed it so far. Um, I guess a little bit more about why we chose like three composers, maybe not the composers themselves, was really mm -hmm. just all logistics for us um thinking about rehearsal time recording time you know like Sonia said earlier with young professionals with full-time teachers gigging musicians so like what can we actually make happen outside of all of that um so and while we would love to work with like 10 different composers that's also a lot to coordinate for one album um, for sure we decided let's stick with three also, a big part, just to be blunt, is the money side of it. How many composers <laughs> can we afford? Um, so, yeah, we had to take that into consideration as well. Um, but, yeah, we, t we didn't really give them any, like, guidelines or limitations. We just said uh, we, we would like a 10-minute piece for Harp Duo. That way we'd have, at the end of it, like, a EP album length. That's awesome. So what has the collaboration process <laughs> looked like for you? Did you kind of give it a structure or are you just kind of going with it and seeing you know, how it unfolds? Well, like Haley said, we, we didn't want to be too limiting in any sort of boundaries for the composers, but um, the door was open. You know, if you need us to edit parts for you or give you feedback like on the spot, please do. You know, we, we want to be helpful. We want this to be a mutual um, you know, mutual relationship too. Um, and so I think the, well, the first piece we got was actually Minho's piece and we sort of got it in full, <laughs> like it was all written and, you know, he, he gave it to us and asked for feedback and, you know, let me know what works, what doesn't work, what you like, what maybe you don't like. Um, so that was, that was kind of our initial, um, our initial piece was just, here it is, let me know. Um, we've been working with Kyle a lot, um, more on like a, a, I guess, what did you say? Yeah, like in smaller sections. like In, in small sections, yeah. And it's been like almost kind of one-on-one -on -one too, because like I've been working with Kyle, Haley's been working with Kyle, then he's kind of rewriting, then we play through it. Um, but he's, you know, he's sort of going chunk by chunk and almost not writing more until what he already has is like working and it's great. Um, so we've been like really involved, which is amazing. Um, you know, I, I'm not a composer and I don't, you know, I can arrange something, but it, it's really cool to like be a part of that process. Um, I will say because we're really involved in this, um, it has sort of affected our project timeline in some ways. You know, our, our first, I think, initial goal was, well, let's record it this summer. You know, yeah. we both teach. We start in the fall. We got to do it this summer. But I think it's been a really nice setback in a way because we get to be even more involved. We get to be a part of the process. We get to like have this one-on-one -on -one conversation. It's educational both for the composer and I think also for, for myself and for Haley as well, you know, how can I put into words like why this doesn't work? I, I think so many times harpists are like, well, it just, it doesn't work. It, it doesn't work. It's too difficult. 
It's too difficult. And you, you know, having the conversation of, well, physically, this is what I'm doing. This is why it doesn't work. I think it's been really, you know, eye-opening and educational both for me and for hopefully our, our composers as well. Um, so anyway, it, it's been yeah. very cool for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I've had that same experience working with composers. Just it's so helpful for them to know exactly why something doesn't work versus mm -hmm. just, oh, it's too hard. No. Is it too hard? Is, no. Do you just need to practice more? I'm like, no, it's just like actually doesn't work on the harp. And here's why. But sometimes you don't really realize that until you're actually working through a score. I'm like, oh, this is why it doesn't work. Here's what I can do to change it and make it work. And just that experience is so valuable for us and also so important for them as well. Absolutely. And I think that was maybe something we, or I didn't realize, you know, we would, we were getting into was, of course, we're going to talk to the composers and, you know, give them feedback, but it, it's really been like a, a process, you know, here's 10 measures. Do they work? Um, what could I make better? You know, is this physically challenging or is it physically impossible to play? And so it's been, it's been cool. Yeah. Yeah. So right now you're recording, um, plan is to do it in August. Is that right? So now we're, we're planning on just focusing on one of the pieces okay. and taking, yeah, recording one piece at a time. I think that will be really good too. So we're not trying to like cram all in, in one weekend or something. Right. Where you can really, you know, get to know a piece. And yeah. We want to give it our best, you know, it, it, I feel like if we went for all three pieces in one weekend, it's like, <laughs> well, we're running out of time. We just got to get it <laughs> and record it. So this sort of will allow us to really focus and, and give it our all for each piece and, you know, honoring each composer the way they really intended to be played to. Absolutely. It gives opportunity as well. If anyone's interested um, in checking out our GoFundMe link, um, it will be available for longer because now we're kind of stretching it <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Thought I'd slide that in there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, something I've realized is, Supporting a composition or a commission at the beginning of it is almost even more important than supporting it afterward by buying music because that you know initial investment is huge. It's you know a lot of time investment for the collaborators. It's a big investment for the composers. They're working hard. They deserve to be paid. I mean, oh, okay. you guys are working hard too, and trying to you know, self fund an album is huge. Um, so yeah, it's great if people buy it afterward, but supporting it, you know, at the beginning to help offset, you know, that big financial burden is really important, you know, to be able to enjoy it afterward. Right. So just wanted to throw that out there. Oh, thank you. And uh, Danielle just shared the GoFundMe link. Um, we're not just asking for flat out donations, by the way. Um, you will get something in return if you're interested. Um, you can either buy all three pieces together if you're working in a harp duo or you're interested in something like that in the future um you can play all three of these pieces after we record it and release it um and then we also will have a physical cd so if you make a donation you will receive that physical copy of our cd yeah oh. absolutely so it's just like a way for you to purchase or buy this stuff now in advance to help support you know the project rather than waiting until afterward Absolutely. Well, and I'm sense. also going to also going to throw out there that while this is our our passion project, like right now, I think, um, you know, it's not going to stop at the recording or, you know, once we release the CD, I think also the plan is to sort of take this on the road. <laughs> um, we we talked about, you know, even doing like a Texas tour, um, you know, both of us living in Texas and having uh, connections, you know, DFW, Houston, Austin, San Antonio now, um, it'd be really cool to take this and actually perform it live. Um, you know, it's, of course, having a CD is wonderful and, you know, please feel free to buy it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we want to also sort of do the live aspect of this too and, you know, take this to, you know, performance yeah. venues, conferences, universities, school, school systems, um, and, you know, kind of educate people and, and, you know, educate them on new music and even new harp duo music, which I think is pretty uncommon as well. 
Mm -hmm. so, it doesn't end here. <laughs> there, yeah. there is always, <laughs> always more coming. For sure. We're all planning to have like our premiere performance, hopefully. Um, it may not happen this season, um, but next season with the Dallas Harp Society. So we'll, we'll keep you posted on that. Awesome. Will that be recorded or available for people to watch live if they're not in DFW? Oh, yeah, most definitely. We'll make or sure. Or pending we'll decision. We'll, we'll, make sure. Yeah. we'll make sure. Yeah, I'm not in DFW anymore, but I would absolutely love to join in if possible. That would be awesome. Awesome. Well, if you haven't checked out the GoFundMe link already, be sure to visit that. It has a ton of information, background of the project, um, links, bios about all of the composers, bios about Haley and Sonia, and then just information of how you can help support this project. So, and then feel free, leave a comment or contact um, Haley and Sonia if you have any questions about it as well. And thank you so much to anyone that has already donated. That's made a huge difference for us already. So big thank you. And well, thank you. <laughs> well, and thank you to Danielle for having us. It's well, it's been fun to reconnect absolutely. all this UNT heartbeat. So. <laughs> so, <laughs> <it'll be great. laughs> well, thank you all for joining me. It's been so, this is um, kind of part of my interview series, just to chat with different harpists about what kind of music they like. Um, I didn't give my spiel at the beginning, but composers always ask me, what kind of music do harpists like to play? Should I write something that's edgy and new? Should I write something that's very harpy and flowy? And I'm like, I don't know. We all like different things. So as a very long winded way to answer this question, I started this interview series just to chat with different people about you know, what you all like. So um, it's very fun to have we you like guys here. <laughs> yeah, I know that's kind of me. I'm like, I like it all. Just we write like it something all. that's important to I you and I want to play it. Well, that's the thing. Just write something. Just as long as I'm not destroying the heart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you all have an amazing weekend and feel free to check out the GoFundMe, leave questions in the comments if you have, would like to learn more. So bye. Bye. bye.